Back at the beginning of this year, I decided that this was the year to launch my commercial production company. I've been freelancing for years, but it was just time to start taking on end clients for myself. So in order to launch the company, I needed two things. Number one, I needed a plan. And number two, I needed some work to put on my portfolio. The key thing is I've been freelancing for other production companies, so I can't put their work on my production company's portfolio. And so I decided to make some spec work. So this video is the behind the scenes for one of the two spec projects we shot leading up to the launch of the company. One day I was eating lunch, staring out the window rather than staring at my phone like I usually do, and an idea popped into my head. I quickly grabbed my phone and made a note. For the outcasts, the dog moms, the yoga gurus, the collectors, the LARPers. Whatever you're into, keep it protected. Clearly this was going to be an insurance commercial. Once I sat down to refine the idea, I landed on four characters I wanted to include. Number one, the plant parent. I wanted this section to feel tight and comedic. I knew that this section would set the tone for the entire ad. Number two, the dog mom. For this scene, I envisioned someone who might have gone a little overboard on the fur babies, so at least six dogs. I originally envisioned this character as super sassy and dressed like she was getting ready for a jazzercise class. We knew this scene would be chaotic, but that was the whole point. Third is the LARPer. I wanted this section to start feeling like a medieval war movie. Start close up and then back out on the study cam to reveal the other LARPers with foam swords looking nervous and our main LARPer with uh, shorts and Crocs on. I also had a vision of our main LARPer pounding a juice box, so there's that. Finally, the gamer. I wanted this scene to feel kind of like a mad scientist meets RGB. Then I pulled a bunch of references and made a treatment for the project. Then I used that treatment to reach out to a bunch of collaborators to see if they were interested in the project. I got a few no's, a bunch of yeses, and off we went. About three weeks out from production, we had our first production meeting with the producer, the director, our production designer, our costume designer, um, and we just chatted about kind of what we're looking for and the direction we needed to go. Then I met individually with the production designer and the costume designer, and we kind of hashed out exactly what we needed to do there, while the producer, thanks Zach, took care of some of the other logistics. So there were so many different ways I could have pre-produced this project, but this one I particularly chose to just write out a document that gave me the five main beats of the video, and then just did a shot list because I knew exactly what I wanted this to look like, um, and I was able to communicate that pretty well with my director. Hey Tim. Let the flare live. Let the flare live. Flares are expensive. We also knew that on the day of the shoot, we'd find some extra coverage that we wanted to pick up as we went along. So about two and a half weeks before we launched the company was production. So we did two full days of production with four different locations and a host of different actors. <laughs> Okay, it's not helping.
27. <laughs> that, that's actually right. At first I was like, this is totally different, but I think this is the right thing. production went very smoothly except for the dog mom scene um, which we expected not to go smoothly because a bunch of people volunteered their dogs and we knew dogs would be a little less predictable than than humans so we were able to make a good time on production and we wrapped on time both days On the post-production side, Tim did most of the post-production and I just kind of did some of the polishing, dropping in some sound effects, changing some things out. We ended up going with a couple different versions of music and found one we liked a little better by the end. I did the color and the audio pass. Tim did the sound design and the basic edit. And at the end of the day, we had a project that we were pretty darn happy with. Now, it only had one experience with doing spec work in the past before, and I ended up taking a, pro a corporate project that we shot for a client and turning it into a commercial project on spec, and then I ended up selling it to that client, and it's been playing on TV for like the last three years, so it's time for a refresh, and hopefully we're the people they come to for that. But I've never done any actual true spec work before. Um, and so this one I knew I wanted it to be unbranded, but it doesn't really sell without the whatever you're into will cover it. And so I decided I'm just gonna make up a fake insurance company, did some Googling to make sure I wasn't using a name that already existed and came up with Alteria. Whatever you're into, we'll cover it. I think it works. So why should you do spec work? Well, number one, to raise the quality of your portfolio. See, the thing with spec work is you can spend as much time as you need to craft the perfect image, the perfect sound design, that kind of thing, and you usually don't have that kind of benefit on a set, right? Time is always a super valuable resource, but now you're on your own time, and so you can take as much time as you need to craft that perfect project for your portfolio. The second thing is if you want to start doing a different kind of work um, than you're currently doing. So I don't know, maybe you do corporate videos and you are kind of sick of corporate videos and so you want to do music videos or commercials or something. Well, doing a project in that genre will actually showcase that to potential clients because clients will only hire you for the type of work you've done before almost without exception. I'm sure there are exceptions, but almost without exception. I hope you found this video valuable. If you did, click the like button down below, and if you wanna subscribe, that'd be cool too. All right, I'll see you in the next one.